This is a bunch of 2x2x120 two by two by square tube hot rolled steel. And upstairs in the logistics staging area, also known as the second bedroom, there are more parts and pieces. And after, oh, some cutting, grinding, welding, sawing, sanding, painting, so forth, the idea is to turn this into a small, lightweight utility trailer with a wooden storage box on it and a rail to carry my bicycle behind the wagon while I do these car camping road trips. So, may as well get on with the cutting and welding and grinding and sawing and sanding and painting. And after some cutting and welding and sawing and painting, I have ended up with this, which you can see is a pretty straightforward little utility trailer with a storage box and a bicycle rail on it. Lightweight little guy. Has a five foot tongue on it which really tracks well. 13 inch wheels and tires so I can go highway speed. The bicycle is really sturdy on there because I don't want to hurt my my good old trusty Schwinn Jaguar, which I've had for, golly, I've probably had that for 20 years. The box is, well, it's essentially four by four, 20 inches deep. It takes two full sheets of plywood to make it, and it's full sheets. You use practically every last centimeter from two full sheets. which makes the, the trailer then heavy enough to actually stay on the ground instead of just bouncing around behind you, which it, it does really well. This thing tracks really, really well. The hinges I had to make, well, everything on it I had to make. I, I mean, I didn't make the fenders or the wheels, of course, but the thing works out really well. And what I, well, one of the things that it has to do when I was designing the thing to begin with where I live we can't store trailers outside which is kind of a pain but I fully agree with it because it's a small little community there's only five units and if we all start sticking trailers all over the place it'll look like crap in no time so I'm fully on board with that and I have made this trailer to completely disassemble. Wheels, tires, axles, springs, fenders, lights, tongue, every bit of it completely disassembles so that you have essentially a four by four 20 inch box that I will mount on the side of my storage or in my case, my shop. And then this lid, which lifts this way will no longer be a lid when it's uh, vertical. It's a door. Everything then fits inside that and it's all contained in, in here. The, I've got these toggle latches on here to get good compression on my weather strip which is pretty substantial. The weather strip is uh, let me see, three-quarter wide, five, a half inch deep, and when it compresses, it gets really tight. And then all of this, this is a metal uh, one-inch angle top, so that should keep that good and tight. I had to make the latches there because they don't make latches the way I want them. This little partition here, forward of that, my toolboxes go. Uh, uh, jack, jack stands, so forth, so that 
all the heavy weight is forward and down low in the trailer, which is where I want it. And that partition keeps it from sliding all around where all my camping stuff will be. The, the lattice on the bottom is just, well, you can get it anywhere. It's, I got this, I believe, at Home Depot. And it was already a half sheet when I got it, so I got it on sale, and then I cut it, the two foot pieces, I cut them to four foot, it fits right in there and keeps things from being directly on the ground there. If it gets any water in it, there are a couple of drain holes in here, and this will keep water from to get to those drain holes. Now here is a really neat little gizmo. My friend Paul helped with the Imagineering on that. It is just solid three-quarter inch steel and on the frame of the of the trailer back here I have a one inch tube welded there. Then this guy will slide through that tube out one of the holes in this wheel put a lock through there and if you want to leave your trailer for a day while you go exploring when you come back the trailer will still be there and wheel too you know unless somebody breaks out a lot of power tools and makes a lot of noise which should alert some people but everything that I need this trailer to do, it will do well. In fact, it's overkill. There are 30 cubic feet of storage in there. Way, I've, I've already done a little run through packing of it. It's way more space than I need. But when I did the cutout map on the plywood, it, it left pieces that allowed me to make 20 inch sides. So that's what I did. I, I originally wanted to be 16 inches, which I think would make it look a little sleeker, but let's it. I mean, it's a, it's a wooden box on a trailer. Sleek is not exactly something that really has to be considered, I think. But for what I want to do, what this is going to do, I'll be sleeping in here. My gear will be back in there. The lid opens on the driver's side. Access is easy. The bicycle is solidly on there, of course. And, uh, well, step one, of course, is welding up the base frame, which I have to say took me a little longer than I had expected, but that's due mostly to my propensity to measure a dozen times and weld once just to be sure I had a flat square accurate frame which I do but my diagonal measurements from here and to here are off 1 16th of an inch. I don't know how the heck that happened but it is. Now I have golly I, I own a dozen squares three of them are stainless steel uh, certif engineered uh, engineering squares, certified square. They're, they have the etching right on them, the BE standard, whatever it might be. They say it's square. I have a framing square from Sterrett, who's known for their accuracy and measurements. That says square. When I do the uh, three, four, Fire triangulation on it that says square so I'm confident it's square I don't know how in the world I ended up a 16th off but I'm gonna accept that as square it is ready to go on the next step I gotta say a couple of these welds look pretty good for a guy who doesn't weld very much it takes a minute to get your groove back in fact you can see there's weld one well, two, well, three is starting to come in. Four is pretty close. Well, five and six just look really good. But when you don't weld that often, what I'm going to do now, I cut up.
quite a few of these angles that are going to sit right in these corners which I'm going to weld in just to stiffen up and reinforce that corner all the corners actually I'm probably going to end up cutting and welding in a diagonal brace right in here too just to be just to work on the the racking of it though I'm, I'm certain it won't happen but overkill overkill is us Anyway, step one, pretty well done. And now the frame has been completely done and welded in. The front cross member is in it. As well, here's the, the tabs I welded on for the, for the tongue, mounting tabs, spring perches, pockets. It's a little uh, areas here. I put, there's a bolt I welded back there to put these or a nut, rather, I welded back there to these half-inch bolts if you ever need to strap something down on it. So it is pretty much time for next phase here. I'll start in on the woodwork now. But I've got the frame springs, all that sort of stuff is complete. So it's, it's coming along. Okay. And uh, in spite of myself, this thing is starting to look like a trailer. Now this, from uh, fore to aft, when this is leveled, there is 16 and a half to the bottom, of, from the bottom of the tongue to the ground, which should leave me about an inch and a half forward down to the hitch, which should be real good. That ought to work out pretty well. And like I say, for what I'm going to do, it ought to be just dandy.